Hello YouTube, my name is Rana B and welcome back to another episode of my survival review. Alright guys, we've got a lot to cover. There were two episodes tonight, so let's delve right into it. I'm gonna jump straight to the reward challenge for episode one because Lauren wins the reward challenge and really starts to set things in motion for the next two episodes. She takes Devin, Ben, and Ashley on the reward with her. And while they were at the reward, they started strategizing about what they could do in the future. And this is the point where they form a brand new four person alliance. And it seems really, really tight. However, they're not the only ones who are trying to form a plan here. Mike as well has a plan to change the game. And his plan is to really make him and Joe kind of the goofball troop. And in their words, they are the cocoa nuts. He is Joe is Coco and Mike is not, wait, no, it could be reversed. You get the idea. And also I think my favorite quote was the Siskel and Ebert because I'm a big movie buff myself. So I did love that little movie insider joke. Yeah. And once everyone is back at camp, now Ryan and Chrissy are starting to go toward Ben. However, they don't know that Ben is playing both sides. He's playing double agent and pretending that he's the one who's going home. When in actuality, he is the one who is part of the main alliance right now. Basically, we're at the point of which alliance is going to win within the seven that have formed this giant alliance that's kind of dominated the latter half of the game here. Will it be Lauren or will it be Ryan, Chrissy, JP? and maybe the healers if they bring them alongside. But things got even crazier because Ben found not only the clue to the hidden immunity idols since it was played last episode, but he also found it in a tree in a, in a clay pot. Which basically means not only does Ben have the idol, but also Ryan still has his. There's two idols in play right now. Plus also Lauren's secret advantage that is still in play. We get to the immunity challenge and it was a pretty close race, but Ashley ends up winning and on the tribal council chopping block for that episode, we have, we have the healers, Joe and Mike, and then we also have JP, Ryan, and Chrissy, who are the outside of the new four person alliance. Also need I add that Devin, Ben, and Lauren sat out of that first immunity challenge just for peanut butter and chocolate. And this is also the group that just had cheeseburgers and fries, the previous reward. So it's like, they are very, very confident that things are gonna go well for them, but I'll get to that later on in the, in the episode. What was more frustrating than anything in the first episode was the fact that Ryan and Chrissy were so oblivious, and JP too, but he's kind of always been oblivious this entire game. But the fact that they had no idea what was happening, they did not even suspect that the seven was gonna crumble. When in fact, most cases on Survivor, if there is a giant alliance of more than five people, it is not gonna last very long. People within that alliance are gonna start to play for themselves, get a new alliance, and start to take you out of the picture and decimate you what you thought was the perfect alliance. So it was just really frustrating to see Chrissy and Ryan, more so on Chrissy's part because she was more vocal about it, but the fact being that she had no idea what was happening. She had no idea that Lauren was turning on everyone. And Ben, Ashley, and Devin too, they had no idea. And that's more fr the most frustrating part of all of that. And also, it turns out to be Devin's idea to start bringing in Mike and Joe to get the numbers on their side. Smart move because now Mike and Joe are two votes to use. That doesn't mean they're gonna be part of your alliance, but it's more numbers for you. And in their minds, it is, and when I say their minds, I mean Joe and Mike's, in their minds, this is saving them one more day. So we go to tribal council and one of the more funnier parts was that Lauren could not contain herself. She was smiling on a number of occasions throughout tribal council and literally I was just laughing because it's like she cannot contain the excitement of blindside in this alliance that she finds so stupid because they don't see what's happening in front of them. So we had a lot of back and forth, a lot of moments where you, I really wish that Ryan or Chrissy had come up with the notion that there's possibly, possibly going to be a blind side, but nope, it ended up happening and JP, surprisingly enough, gets voted off and he becomes the third member of the jury. A little shocking that JP went home instead of Ryan since he did have the idol and everyone knows that he has the idol, but I think it's the case of they're probably getting rid of the henchmen, which has been a which has been a survivor tactic in the past. You get rid of the people who are working with your opposite alliance member or the head of that alliance, take them out and they have nothing. So I think that's the plan. That's the only thing I can think of why they would get rid of JP other than the fact that he is a physical competitor. All right, so moving on to next episode, we had the aftermath of the previous tribal council and obviously Ryan is shocked 
But I think more than anything, Chrissy is the one who's more like emotionally hurt and upset by what happened. She did not see it coming. And she also had an issue with the fact that they were kind of gloating. I wouldn't say gloating, but they were really rubbing it in their faces about how much they blindsided them, which I can understand you being excited about a blindside, but you don't have to be a complete, you know, you know, I don't know the words, but basically you don't have to rub it in their faces. And also we see that Ben is really, really trying to hide the fact that he, he that he is playing double agent for both sides. He himself even admitted that it was a very stressful thing for him to do, but it is working as of right now. So obviously Ryan is in a very, very bad spot right now. He really does not have anywhere to go. He only has Chrissy. His other alliance member is gone. He, his previous alliance is completely decimated. He's on his own with Chrissy. So what he has to do is talk to as many people as he can to save his ass. So the first person he goes to was his former ally, Devin, and goes to him and asks, you know, what's going on and stuff like that. And that is where Ryan learns about the new alliance and also the fact that the reason why Devin doesn't trust Ryan anymore is because he told Ben about his, about Ryan's hidden immunity idol. And I think this is the moment where Ryan's really like, you know, oh shit, I really screwed myself over here. Yet again, we have another reward challenge, and this time it was in two different teams, and we had, on the winner side, we had Joe, Ben, Ashley, and Devin, three same people from the last reward going on this one again. Uh, they won the reward of spas, massages, showers, and chicken veggie wraps. And this now gives an opportunity for Ryan, who's back at camp, to talk to Mike about possibly working together. And it is obvious that Mike has nothing to say to Ryan and does not want anything to do with it. He makes the point, which is true, that Ryan could have gone to Mike earlier to form an alliance, but every time Mike came to Ryan, he said no. That is a very... Usually when that happens, you don't think it would come to bite you on the ass in the future, but in this game, anything can happen. So definitely making sure that you handle every single relationship you have with every single person on your tribe, it, not even outside of your alliance. You have to make sure that you are putting off the right energy to those people, because if not, they're not going to want to work with you in the future, which is exactly what happened with Ryan. And then we see on the other side that Chrissy is trying to talk to Lauren and Lauren's not having any of her either. Basically, Lauren doesn't like Chrissy all that much. She thinks she's too talkative and just kind of not a person she wants to work with. So Lauren is just kind of going along with what she's saying, but deep down Lauren's like, I'm not having any of this. So Mike and Lauren are right now in an alliance with everyone else that is really, really tight. The thing is, is there a crack that possibly Ryan and Chrissy could slip into? And then we get to the immunity challenge and Chrissy pulls it out, wins immunity, and on the Tribal Council chopping block for this episode, the main focus is Ben and Joe. Now the main alliance wants to get out Joe because he is a big threat, he's been a big threat for a lot of the game now, but then Ashley and Lauren decide that Ben is also a big threat and maybe it's time to get rid of him before he gets too far and he ends up winning. Now there are some pros and cons to each of these outcomes. If you get rid of Joe, Mike, who is now in tied with the main alliance, he's gonna leave and he's probably gonna go with with Ryan and Chrissy because he feels betrayed at this new alliance that he's formed with. And in that case, it'll be a four to three, um, you know, alliances here. Now, that, granted, they're still a majority, but it's a lot easier for the three to get someone from this side and make it so this is three and this is four. It's very simple to get someone to flip over if you tell them the right thing. So that's the issue and I guess a, a, a pro, depending on who you're rooting for. If you get rid of Ben, you'll keep Joe and Mike on your side because they didn't like Ben from the get-go. So that way you still have the numbers on your side, making it a five to two, making it that Ryan and Chrissy are still on the bottom and that's still an easy bottom to go after. But like we saw from before the last episode, there was a seven and there were the two and they didn't get rid of the two. They started attacking themselves or within themselves. So basically the question is, what pros outweigh the cons here? What is the best move to make as of right now in a game that's all about timing? So we get to Tribal Council, Ryan ends up playing his Hidden Immunity Idol, and you think in the beginning that maybe that was a good move because he did get votes. Sadly though, he only got two votes. Other than that, Ashley got some votes, but Joe ends up going home and he is now the fourth member of the jury. Now I gotta say, I am happy that, that Joe is gone. I mean, I've been saying for weeks that he should have gone home, but the thing is, right now, I didn't see him as being the biggest threat at, once these two episodes aired, it really changed my whole mind on how this game is working right now. 
I don't think Joe was the biggest threat. He was on the bottom. I mean, he only had Mike. He could do his normal tactics, but they really weren't gonna help him all that much. Because now you have Ben, you have Ryan, you have Devin, you have Lauren, and you have Mike. And I think they are the bigger threats right now. So the fact that Joe went home, I mean, it's, it is satisfying knowing that he's finally gone, but I would have been more satisfied if he had gone earlier in the merge rather than right now, because now there's bigger threats that kind of trumped his spot here. All right, so moving on to previews for next week, it is going to be the loved one visit episode and the loved ones are going to be involved in a challenge so that'll be fun i personally love the loved ones visits they're one of my favorite episodes to watch i just love seeing the raw emotion of the contestants after being separated them for so long and being in the stress of the game so it'll be nice to kind of see them you know let loose a little bit and just i love seeing like the human emotion of these contestants who tend to be who can be brutal at times and then the biggest thing that came out of the preview ben is starting to is starting to suspect that his alliance is not with him all the way, which he is correct about since Lauren and Ashley were trying to target him and get him out. So he decides to make a fake hidden immunity idol, which has been done in the past, uh, going all the way back to, I think it was season 14, where we had Yao Man who created the first you know fake idol, and then um, Ozzy did it in Micronesia, although it was a really bad looking fake idol, which he, had, he himself would admit to. And then you had Gabon, where Bob made two fake idols, and they both looked really, really good. So those are the... Now, it's been done since, but those are the main times, whenever I think of a fake hidden immunity idol, those are the first names that pop into my head. So we're going to have to see what this whole fake idol thing is going to do for Ben. Now, there are a couple of outcomes and a couple of reasons why he would do this. He could psych out his whole alliance, which would include Devin, and, this could, and then he could flip on them and go with Chrissy and Ryan, or he can only use it to psych out... Maybe the opposite, they can, you know, psych out Chrissy and Ryan, although Ben actually does have an idol in his pocket, but now this could change up thinking for Chrissy and Ryan and Mike, since I'm going to figure that Mike is going to join with Chrissy and Ryan. And then also, he, Ben can use this as leverage to bring, to bring Devin over with him to the other alliance, and this is going to leave Lauren and Ashley in the dust. Now, again, we don't know. We're gonna have to wait till next episode to see how this is going to unfold. But, oh boy, things are getting complicated and things are getting interesting. Now, I already touched on this briefly, uh, not that long ago, about ranking who I think is the bigger threat. Like I said, Ben, Devin, Ryan, Lauren, and Mike, I think are the bigger threats with Ashley and Chrissy kind of being on the bottom only because they appear to be like the right hand. They're never like the leader, although I think they would like to admit that they are, especially Chrissy. But I think it's the five who are the big threats here. Now where they stack, they kind of stack for different reasons. So I don't know if I can really rank them per se out of the five, but those are the top threats right now. Um, I am leaning probably toward more of a Ben and maybe a Lauren and a Devin, but that's where I'm at right now with that. I really can't rank them because this episode just kind of changed my whole perspective on what's happening right now. So we're gonna have to wait until next episode to see what happens. Well, there you guys go. That is my review of this week's Survivor. I hope you guys liked it. And hopefully I got everything cramped into this video out of two episodes. But if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me comments down below. What did you think of tonight's episode? And if you wanna see my future videos or videos I've already done, go ahead, hit subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you can be notified when my videos come out. That's all I have for you guys today, and until the next video, bye! Mwah.